All right, let's go. Unsolved mysteries. West Bengal, India has its fair share of allegedly haunted places, but perhaps none are as creepy or as intriguing as the Aliyah ghost lights. In the swampy marshes of West Bengal, there have ghost? been many sightings of ghost? these lights called Aliyah or jack-o'-lantern. Ghosts? They're described to be a flickering ball of light ghost? that emerges usually in the marshy regions of West Bengal and Bangladesh, and they've been attributed to being the cause of death of many fishermen. The fishermen community of the area have often spotted these unexplainable lights, and many believe that some of the fishermen were so transfixed after seeing the Aliyah light that they followed it and drowned. It's also believed by many in the area that these lights are the spirits of dead fishermen who lost their lives fishing in the marshes. These lights at times confuse the fishermen, causing them to fall in the water and drown, but also at other times, they may help guide them and prevent them from getting into danger. At least How would that's you what fall in the believe. water? Aliyah ghost lights are not just limited to West Bengal, though. They have been spotted in various places around the world, and these lights have long been associated with the paranormal or spirits. Some good spirits, some bad spirits. It's said that one- I feel like it could be more like some weird, you know, like, what would he call them? The Northern Lights or whatever? Where, like, there's some weird situation with the solar en energy field of the stratosphere, Earth- Science. Once you follow one of these lights, they'll flicker and diminish in size until they disappear, often causing people to panic and get lost. People have seen these lights all around the world, in graveyards, swamps, and boglands, and they have been referred to as many different names. Anaya Carr from Siliguri was on the phone with her husband who was on a solo fishing trip, and when he had mentioned seeing a bright light glimmering across the marsh, he stopped replying, though the call didn't end right away. Anaya would keep saying her husband's name into the phone until it sounded like the phone was dropped, and then the call abruptly ended. Her husband was never seen again. Scary sound. In 2014, taxi drivers in Ibadan, Nigeria were starting to disappear, and while there was no outward evidence of any sort of foul play at first... Okay. We already know. We know what this one is. Hallucinations for sure. True. That could also be a thing. This one is that one, right? Yeah, Aurora Borealis. You're telling me the entirety of Aurora Borealis is located in your living room? Or was it kitchen? I forget what that meme was. Um, This is the one where uh, uh, there was like, they kept snatching up taxi drivers and like locked them in a, in a room and cut them up and sold their parts to the black market. This is the one, right? People started to become suspicious when more and more people would disappear and mysterious looking strangers would be lurking the area. Police were notified of the disappearances, but reportedly were uncooperative, refusing to investigate further and saying that the men had likely just- Yeah, because w the cops were a part of it? Shadow poop on them now? Well, no. As the disappearances continued in the area, there was still no official response until a motorcyclist riding down a highway claimed that he had heard some crying out for help from the forest. On March 22, yep. 2014, police finally went about investigating the forest, where they would stumble across a literal house of horrors. <sighs> there, tucked away in the trees, yep. was a seemingly abandoned building a video which on emanated a vile stench. Upon entering the building, they were met with countless decomposed human corpses, most of which had been bound with chains. As the search of the place continued, police began turning up other human remains in the surrounding area, many of them having been butchered and missing limbs, some of them even still bound with chains. There were also numerous human remains found scattered in the surrounding woods, stuffed within bushes, in the nooks of trees, or dumped into no, holes it wasn't in the ground cannibalism. or into caves. It was, they were selling their body parts to the black market, basically. It was like a, giant, like a huge ring of... Uh, and they got away with it, too. They never caught him, which to be fair, I feel like the cops were a little bit a part of it because they didn't really the corpses try. Corpses and remains were in various states of decomposition, <laughs> many of them missing limbs or internal organs. In total, over 20 decomposed human bodies and hundreds of human skulls were found in the forest, and there was a separate building full of only personal belongings of the victims, including licenses, clothing, and even children's <laughs> toys. 15 people were rescued. This is a bad time, but I want to go on a hike soon. <laughs> Right when we when we hear about this this death factory in the middle of the woods, I want to go on a hike. But yeah, let's do it. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Let's do it.
captivity. It goes somewhere also this weekend. severely malnourished. When police interviewed them, in most cases they could not identify the people who had taken them, but they described that they had been kidnapped, tortured, and kept in shackles with once a week feedings. However, a few claimed that the men who kidnapped them had been government officials. Excuse me, the police did nothing to help? Them. Yeah. The answers as to what exactly happened here have not been made completely clear, and it's unknown who took these people or where they went. And while some arrests were made, no one has been officially charged with any of it. Yeah, I remember on the story that I think it was Ballin told, um, they, what was it? Like, someone called, like, like someone called someone on a phone and they were like, they said they were located underground. It was like a friend that they were trying to find, but they never found him. They found this, but they never found like the underground area at which he was located. So they probably like either moved him in like a storage container or some shit. I don't know. The cops immediately tore down the building. Yeah. Average police L. Yes. Isn't that right? Isn't that right, Daniel? Isn't that right? Average police L, right? Please don't poop on my hand. On January 2nd, 2000, Zeb Wayne Quinn went missing in Asheville, North Carolina. Zeb was 18 years old and working at a local Walmart in the electronics section when he disappeared after finishing his shift. At around 9 p.m., he had plans to travel a moderate distance with his co-worker Robert Jason Owens to buy a new car. Zeb met Robert in the Walmart parking lot before they drove separately to look at the vehicle. The two men were seen on surveillance footage at a nearby gas station at approximately 9.15 p.m. purchasing sodas at a convenience store. Ow. According to Robert, after leaving the gas station, Zeb signaled for him to pull over by flashing his headlights. Zeb told him that he had received a page and needed to return the call. After he returned from using a payphone, Robert described Zeb as frantic and nervous. Zeb told him that he needed to cancel their plans to view the car, and he eventually sped off, rear-ending Robert's truck in the process. Hours later, Robert was treated at a hospital for fractured ribs and a head injury that he claimed was due to a second car accident that same evening. No accident report was ever filed with police. The following afternoon, Zeb's mother Denise filed a missing persons report. Two days after he was last seen, a man claiming to be Zeb placed a phone call to the Walmart where he worked. The man told Zeb's co-worker that he would not be coming to work due to coming down with a fever, but the co-worker recognized that the voice was not Zeb's. The phone call was placed back to a Volvo plant where Robert worked. When questioned, Robert admitted to making the phone call, claiming that he was doing Zeb a favor after he called and asked Robert to call in sick for him. During police investigations, a woman named Misty Taylor was interviewed, as she and Zeb had become romantically involved in the weeks prior to his disappearance, and he had told friends and family that he had been threatened by her abusive boyfriend, Wesley Smith, after he discovered that the two of them had been speaking. On January 6, 2000, Zeb's mom received a phone call from a former classmate of her son. Thank you, Lucius, for the dollar. Who happened to be a co-worker at the Asheville Hospital where both were nurses who told her that she had seen his car in the parking lot of a barbecue restaurant next to the hospital. Police examined the car, which had been left with its headlights on, but there was also a pair of lips and an exclamation mark drawn on the car's back windshield in lipstick. And a live puppy was found inside. A plastic hotel keycard was also discovered what the fuck? in the vehicle, but police couldn't find the source hotel. There was also a jacket that didn't belong to Zeb in the car. Police collected forensic evidence from the car, but uncovered no new leads. Zeb's mother believes that the car was placed there by somebody that knew that his family worked and lived nearby, intending that one of them would find it. A couple later called police to report that they had seen Zeb's car being driven in downtown Asheville before it was parked at the restaurant, and assisted police in producing a composite image of the person driving the car. Oh! <laughs> oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. Can't do that. Police later noted that the sketch looked identical to Misty Taylor. Robert Jason Owens <coughs> was arrested in 2017 for the murder of Zeb. However, in his plea agreement in July of 2022, just last month, Robert's story went that his uncle Gene, who died in 2017, knew Misty. Wait, why did he get arrested? Well, it was Misty, right? Taylor's aggressive boyfriend and was asked to do something to keep Zeb away from her. And Robert said his uncle's remedy was murder though he said that he played no part and only witnessed it. 
the judge accepted Robert's plea and sentenced him to 150 to 189 months in prison, which will be served concurrent to a 60 to 75 year sentence he's currently serving for the murder of a couple in 2015, which is an entire... So he already murdered people. So, what? Really different story of its own. Regarding Zeb's murder, no one can really know for sure what actually happened. But where's this Misty girl? Did I miss something? Where's this Misty girl? Am I stupid? Did I miss something in the story? They just ignore her? Did, was, did anyone kind of get really confused with this story? Or is it just, am I just really dumb? I need some support here. You're lost. I ain't caught any. Yeah, okay. I was, so it's not just me. Okay. Yeah, I, I was really hard to follow that story. I don't know why. Yeah, because I, like, so he he disappeared. Someone called to do his job, but it wasn't him. But then the dude who got arrested said he called for him. And Misty was driving the car. But where did Misty go? Um, I, bruh, I have no idea. On July 13th, 2011, Rebecca Zahau was found hanging at the Spreckles Mansion in Coronado, California. And she was pronounced dead by first responders <laughs> called to the residence. Rebecca's body was found nude, bound, and gagged. Her death occurred two days after six-year-old Max Shackney, the son of her boyfriend Jonah Shackney, had fallen from the staircase of the mansion and was held in a hospital in critical condition. Rebecca and her younger sister Zena were the only people present at the time of Max's fall. On July 16th, 2000... So, is it a situation like the boyfriend thought it was her that did it? 11, Max succumbed to his injuries and died in the hospital. Oh, Rebecca's terrible. death was ruled a suicide, but her sisters don't buy it and have long pressed their point, waging battles both with authorities and possible suspects. On July 12th, 2011, Rebecca dropped off Zena at the airport for her flight back to Missouri. And then I'll be honest up here. Brother. I'll be honest. Yeah, someone probably murdered her. Because uh, if, if, if your child dies... And someone else is, it's their responsibility. Like it's someone else, it's their responsibility to keep an eye on them. Without further interruption, let's celebrate and suck. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Like if that person happened to be unhinged, yeah, they might murder. They might kill. They can't do that. Murder's illegal. Oh shit, you're right. They're Adam, who had just arrived on a flight from Memphis, Thank you so much, Tennessee. Jay Breezy. Rebecca, Jonah, and Adam ate dinner with a friend named Howard that evening. Afterwards, Rebecca and Adam Jesus returned Christ, to the Spreckles rich? mansion, the while Jonah held a vigil for Max with the child's mother, Dina Romano. There were reports of- Dude, rich people are crazy. I'm not surprised that this shit happened. Rich people are crazy. Loud music coming from the Spreckles mansion later that night. On the morning of July 13th at around 6.45 a.m., Adam stated that he found Rebecca's nude body hanging from a balcony with her wrists and ankles bound, bound. and her hands behind her back. Who, how would you even suicide like that? With your wrist and ankles bound, how do you can't suicide like that? There's no way. How are you supposed to suicide like that? And gagged. How do you do that? And nude. Like, <laughs> and they just ruled it as a suicide? He called 911 at 6.48 a.m then sent a text message to his brother to inform him of the news. He cut down her body before the police arrived. Medics attempted to revive her, but it was already far too late. Police performed an autopsy to determine the cause of death. And from the start, speculations of foul play had arisen, but investigators you would think. were unable to find any other DNA at the scene besides Rebecca's. The San Diego- All right, that's a classic police L right there. Classic police L. Just, oh, can't find any DNA. It must be suicide. Yeah, she probably bound her hands, her ankles, and gagged action, herself, then threw herself off that. Dick. 
You know, that, that's a regular suicide thing. Thank you so much, Champers. I appreciate it for becoming a member. Yeah, I'm so fucking confused on that. The Diego Sheriff's Department formally announced their finding that Rebecca had committed suicide. But her family Ooh, wasn't happy about that, and they were firm on their belief that she did not commit suicide. Family and friends looked at Adam's brother off. as a prime suspect, as he was alone in the house with Rebecca during her hanging, and it could have been a revenge killing for the accidental death of his nephew while Yes. It was. While he was under Rebecca's watch. <coughs> for seven years, Rebecca's sisters had to fight to make it known she didn't commit suicide, and eventually it paid off. In 2018, a jury in San Diego found Adam Shackney responsible for the hanging death of Rebecca after a month-long civil trial. Rebecca's family was awarded more than $5 million for loss of companionship. The 12-member jury found Shackney responsible for her death in a 9-3 vote. The majority agreed Adam touched Rebecca with intent to harm her before her death, and the touching caused her death. The court never awarded- The touching caused her death. So he just like, touched her? She died? Eh? So, this is a classic moral dilemma case. Well, to be fair, you know, I don't really know how that kid died. But, um, I don't know. I would, I would be upset too if, if my child died in, in your care. Actually, it's not even his child. That's his, that's his nephew. But, I don't know. All of it's bad. Touching, binding wrist. Yeah, I don't get any. Dude, why are they lightly putting this? You know what I mean? Why are they like lightly? Oh, it could have been suicide. Oh, he killed her by touching her. What is this shit? What? I think that kid's death. Yeah, that kid's death was also pretty weird. This whole situation is weird. Or did any punitive damages? Because this One was a touch, civil man. trial, Adam didn't face any criminal charges and cannot be sentenced to prison. Tickled Regardless to of the civil suit, the findings by police allegedly pointed at Jonah and Adam being innocent and Rebecca's death being a suicide. But the biggest flaw in that would be the way in which Rebecca's body was found hanging, bound and gagged. It's not something somebody would do to themselves. What? Is this Sims? Becca's body was found hanging, bound and gagged. It's not something somebody would do. Was it S they use Sims to <laughs> to recreate it? Sims mod getting wild. <laughs> to themselves. I don't Still, remember that really Sims happened, 4 mod. Never be known for sure. Suicide Sims. Okay, I, okay, I disagree with this title. I got clickbaited. Every single one of these have been solved, except the beginning one with the lights. But everything has been solved. Like this one, we figured out that he was the murderer. He got arrested. Uh... This one, it's blatantly obvious who killed her, and he got arrested. Uh, this one with the with the killing, with we already know that that's like harvesting their organs for for uh, the black market. We know all of these. Late April Fool's joke from Mister Nightmare. I got clickbaited, man. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother. To get me more views, please.